All right, we're back with another Chibi ReZero Episode 9 review. And so far, we've been like one episode ahead due to scheduling. But I think it just makes more sense to be like on, you know, parallel. So like by the time I'm done Episode 9, we'll do Episode 9 review before we get to Episode 10. Here we go. Oh, I am so freaking upset with that cliffhanger right now. Episode 9 cliffhanger. And that is... Basically, Rem, uh, uh, Berserk mode, Subaru got fucked up, and then <laughs> we're like, wait, is he about to die or not, right? Oh, I'm so upset. I'm so upset. Oh, oh, I'm seeing red. I don't think that this run is going to fail, though. We got too far. Like, they're teasing, but, like, I didn't see any lethal injuries. There's no limb being cut off. It was, it was bite marks, so, like... I think we're still good. I'm seeing fucking red right now because that cliffhanger. Fuck that cliffhanger. Fuck that cliffhanger. <laughs> really. Just fuck that cliffhanger. That. Oh. We'll probably get worse cliffhangers later on. Yeah, it was a bit annoying. You know what I'm so mad about right now? Like, what? I'm so mad. It's not what? just the cliffhanger that is getting to me right now, or uh -huh. the, when it comes to the series. It's that if there's anything, usually I like to watch the anime, okay? I like to yeah. watch the anime, and I'll wait each week for an episode. Yeah. That's usually how I am. I'm fine with that, even if I love the series. Okay. But, damn it, one series I would love to read ahead and know what the fuck is going to happen. Zero. I would want to read the light novel. It doesn't have an English translation. What? There's no English translation for the light? Eight years ago, right? Eight years. Damn, that's fucked up. He can't even read the light novel. You better learn Japanese, my man. You, you better learn how to fucking read Japanese to read the light novel. <laughs> but, like, that's eight years ago, right? Eight year, I'm sure that fucking... And I'm sure there's different translations of the light novels out now, right? And, like, with AI technology coming out, one of the most exciting things about AI... I know there's a lot of doom and um, uh, there's a lot of uh, negativity around it, but I think that language translation, having good subs or, like, being able to just translate any language into your own different readable language would be such a convenient thing. Light novel yet, and I can't read ahead. It makes me so fucking upset. Because I, I just want to know. I, I just want to know. And I would love if there was an English translation right now. Like, if there was, I, I'm telling you right now, if there was material already past this right now that I could read, I would fucking read it right now in a heart. And just like how Chibi feels like this, I bet there's a lot of other people that also feels the same way. And what's happening right now? We've identified a market. We've identified an audience. The audience is ReZero enjoyers that wants to go beyond the anime and experience the source material. But the pain point of this client is that they don't know how to read Japanese. If you can provide a solution at this time, you could make so much money by offering a service where you did translate or you, you know, basically did some other shit to alleviate that pain point, that's how a business is made. It is so damn good. I'm getting so into this series. I'm watching this episode. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And as I know time is passing, I'm like, it's about to end. It's about to fucking end. It's about to fucking end. And when that ending part of the episode happens, Subaru is getting mauled on. I'm mm -hmm. like, but the mauling was so mild. Again, there was no limbs being cut off. There was no crazy bite marks that suggested a lethal injury. He got bit around the limbs, and then he passed out. I think he's going to be fine. Mm, and he saw it. Fuck. Just fuck. Okay, so... As you can see, I got into the episode. I really loved this episode. It pissed me off because of the cliffhanger. And I got to wait all week until the next episode. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. That sucks so fucking much, dude. <sighs> Come on, bro. Seriously, if there was material past this episode already translated into English, I'd be reading that shit right now. I would be fucking reading it. Because I... I just want you to let you know that it's been two minutes of a nine minute video. And he has said nothing of substance about the episode other than the anger that he feels about the cliffhanger. And I feel that. I feel you for sure. But like, I want to talk about the fucking anime and like what we're watching. And you are just fucking padding. Bro, come on. Bro, come on, man. I would love to see what's going to happen. <sighs> Oh my god, dude. 
This episode was so good. It was such a good episode. Tell me why it was good then, motherfucker. We're running out of time. Good. And so many right key moments too. It was just okay. such a good episode because I mean, Subaru's reaction to how he yeah. acted, what he's learned. That, that's two minute, bro. And like, it's fine if you have a two minute intro. But the length of the video, the full video is under 10 minutes. This is, this is masterful stalling that we're seeing right now. X supreme YouTube skills at work. Learn throughout this arc and the you know previous arc. Yeah. What you know, Rim and Rom has had uh, has learned. Ain't no way y'all calling this a One Piece episode. <laughs> yeah, we got through the recap, guys. We got through the recap at the opening, and now we're gonna get to the main content. Twins, what they have learned from Subaru in. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Technical difficulties on my end. So one second. Let me just reconnect this. Uno momento this time frame that they've so many right key Come moments on. too it was just such a good episode because i mean subaru's reaction to how he acted what he's learned throughout this arc and the yes. you know previous arc what you know rim and rom has had has learned the twins what they have learned from wait wait what you know rim and rom has had uh rim and rom yo fuck ram rim and rom that that should be the main twin combo bro has learned the twins what they have learned from subaru in this time frame that they've kind of known him in these couple of days that he's kind of been revived yeah. i mean just overall just this fucking episode was so good it was such a good episode it was such a good episode like that one scene where subaru he just walks up to beatrice he's like oh mm -hmm. i've been cursed and she's like what what are you what are you talking about yeah and to beatrice it must be crazy because on that day a couple hours ago he asked her about the curse but obviously to subaru He's been, you know, at this for a long time now. And for Beatrice to then have this kid show up like six hours later and be like, yep, yeah, can you check this curse? Like that shit should have been so suspicious. Imagine if that was someone like Rosball doing the inspection being like, what the fuck? How? Where? How? I just talked about curses like a day ago and now you're saying this? Yeah. He's like, I've been cursed. I need you to check. And, and she's like, I don't need you to repeat yourself and all that. Oh my God. Beatrice's entire persona, her character is... She... Beatrice... Is a bit of a pushover because she has this tsundere appeal and kind of pushes back or it seems like she's pushing back with her harsh words and she does insults here and there but quite often if you pressure her just a bit Beatrice just kind of folds and do whatever Subaru will tell her to do it's so great the way she acted and all that and getting all pissy with Subaru I was just loving that I, I fucking love that entire scene but then what really sold me was how Subaru was looking at the weapon that was yeah. pulled out he's like what, what's that the chain. you see the big fuck Rem's weapon right as we're about to go into the forest and she brings out the weapon and I have no clue where the fuck she stores that weapon like where does that, does she just summon it? It just it comes out of thin air. We hear the, you know, the jingling of the chains there and like, oh God, PTSD. Fucking mace that murdered his ass a couple episodes ago. And he's looking at, I mean, you gotta imagine real quick, okay? Subaru, he's been revived constantly. And he sees this weapon pulled out by a girl he's trying to protect. She pulls out this weapon and that's the exact same weapon that mm -hmm. destroyed him. Freaking massacred him like he was nothing. So you take a moment to think about that. That's kind of scary. Like, holy shit. That weapon pulled out. He's probably scared. He's like, oh my god, that's the weapon that killed me. You're not going to use that on me, are you? And then as she's just like, flinging around this maze, she's just murdering all these dogs like it's nothing. You know, like, they're all just dropping dead, hitting the ground, being splattered into a bunch of guts and stuff. I was like, god, the violence in action, too, is pretty intense this episode. In terms of the animation quality, they definitely made the scene darker. So that's obviously it's a nighttime. And what I noticed in modern anime, usually these shitty isekais, is that as soon as the atmosphere or the visibility gets dark, they figure out different uses for CGI because obviously people are going to not be able to see it as well. So they'll sneak in CGI here and there, which sometimes gets really fucking bad. In ReZero, the Hellhounds, the Witch Fiends, there were some moments of CGI being used, but at no single moment did I feel like it was like a whiplash. Like, it broke my immersion because of how just... Terrible, the CGI was blending in with the rest of the environment. So, yeah, I mean, ReZero, it just had some really good moments that's been building up through multiple episodes, and it just came full circle in this episode. And I'm just left like, oh my god. Is he gonna die? I I is Subaru gonna die? That would be so troll if, they if he died, but I think that each death must serve a purpose. 
If he died right now, there's little to no difficulty to get back to where he is due to now, now knowing who the Shaman is and everything. And in fact, if we did die, honestly, the next run could be even more optimal because we could prevent the other kids from being fucked up, you know, when, by the time that we left the village. But I just don't think that this run is really the one where Subaru will die. It just doesn't really feel like there's any purpose in that death and we should be fine. Because that would really freaking suck if he died. Right when all this is going on, he goes this far. He does that breakdown with Amelia and all that, and then he dies. I I, I hope not. That it would. <laughs> if he died, then he'd have he tries so hard to get a lap pillow again. He would try so fucking because this is the run with the lap pillow, you know, included in. It's honestly a pretty decent run with Amelia in terms of getting her affection. Now. I still don't think there's any romantic intent, but we definitely did bond and we actually did settle some level of intimacy there. So it's, 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 this run is looking pretty decent. Definitely the best of any run that we've gone so far. Really suck if next week's episode starts and he's dead as fuck. I, I, I would be so fucking upset. I'm like and not just with Amelia, but like all the things that he told Rem, the motivations as to why he needs to save the kids, which I still think is so weird. Like, you barely know these kids, and you're talking about these different kids' dreams and hopes and aspirations. And me being a cynical fucking asshole, maybe I just can't feel like this is authentic. Maybe Subaru is just such a genuinely holy person that he does care that much. I wonder if there's any ounce of, you know, pride or some level of selfishness in disguising this selfless act of saving it for the kids when at the end of the day, he just wants to prove himself his worth to the rest of everybody. But Rem did see Subaru, you know, talk like that and want to help other people. So in terms of the affections and bonding with the other maids, I think this is also a great run too. Like, you know how pissed off Subaru would have to be? He'll get a lap pillow from Rossfall Butterfly Effect. Stop. Stop. <laughs> That's a nightmare lap pillow! Is there a fan art? Is there a fan art of Roswell giving Subaru lap pillow? That sounds hilarious. Be like, you know, I would be pissed. I'd be pissed as the, you know, the wall. Or Ramji. Ramji lap pillow. Watcher. But if I was the person that had to redo all that shit after doing oh, so much fuck. and being, you know, so good trying to- Yo, we're, 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 nobody commissioning this shit? Someone needs to find an artist and commission. Listen, you, uh, so that one episode of ReZero where Amelia gives lap pedal Subaru, uh, place uh, Roswell there instead of Amelia. No, no one commissioned that art? I get everything right. And then I lost all like that. I, oh, I'd be so mad. I'd be so fucking mad if I was Subaru. But I'm willing to play some bets here. I'm just going to throw this on out. As we know, the first arc, the way it concluded, was Subaru kind of passing out and almost dying. You remember that? Like, the mm -hmm. first arc, Subaru got cut, and then he kind of passed out after everything was... Yeah, and my assumption is that was basically him dying due to the curse in bed. Now, we can't confirm it because he's cool, could have been clobbered by a weapon in sleep, but that's what I'm assuming. It's good, and then that was it, and then he woke up in the bed, and he met the twins and stuff, and Beatrice. Well, I believe that's kind of what's going on here. It's very similar, if you think about it. Look, mm -hmm. he's passing out, he's almost dead, mm -hmm. he goes unconscious, episode ends. It's very similar to how that was at the end of Act 1, or, sure. you know, the first arc. And now we see this makes a lot of sense maybe that's what's gonna happen he's gonna wake up and everything's gonna be kind of fine it's kind of like a checkpoint so i feel like that would be such a i don't know i want this because like the battle's not over yet we're still in the middle of the forest fighting against the witch fiend and for us to get bailed out because we passed out i want to see the rest of the action i want to see i want to have closure for the battles that's happening right now Maybe that's what's happening here. I could be wrong. Maybe next week's episode will begin and he's completely fine. Or maybe he's dead as fuck. I have no idea. But still, this series, it, it hurts. The cliffhangers hurt. It really hurts the soul. It really does. Now... Can't relate. Every day we're farming ReZero content. And not just ReZero. Break time. Cut content. Reviews. Any way that I can figure out more ReZero content. We get it. One thing, too, is how subaru mentions the witch the foul or the stench of the witch's curse mm. or whatever on him and Indeed. he talks about this like hey i'll answer all your questions when i'm done with this and i wonder exactly how is he going to go about that because as we already know if he tries to talk about the curse like you know how he's going back in time or the resetting 
he might be killed or you know she does the death grip on your balls and says hey don't do that something might happen really bad might happen to him so i wonder how he's going to exactly talk about that maybe he will say i'm cursed to the point where i can't talk about it but it's really bad or something like like i wonder how much can you tell without telling right because like there are some indirect ways that Subaru has been communicating, even in the lap pillow of like all the different things he's tried so hard. You know, I've tried over and over and I've failed. Like, of course, this is not him saying I can die and return by death and repeat. But obviously, there's some hints here and there that he's leaving out. What at what point does the witch get mad? You know, I, I, I want to I want to like there must be a line and the witch is like, mm, is this a spoiler or not? Like, if, if we consider, you know, the amount of things that, like, he confirms to be a spoiler or not. Like, if he says return by death and that's a spoiler, then, she, then she's basically like me, like, hmm. Is it spoilers? Indirect spoilers? Hmm, I don't know, I don't know. So, like, I'm still trying to figure out, like, exactly what sets off Satala to, like, prevent him from, you know, or not prevent, but, like, just show up. That I have no idea. Maybe he could figure out some form of loopholes. Maybe that's like a type of arc we're going to be getting into. Maybe he might try to figure out some loopholes of how he could talk about the witch's curse. And maybe this doesn't really matter, but the only time that actually happened was when we were talking to Amelia, right? Until we can, like, like if we were able to tell other people about the secret, and if the same shit happened, then I could also be like, okay, it's, it's, this is, you know, uh, not a specific thing. But it's very interesting that the only time this has ever happened was with Amelia. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to assume that it's specific to Amelia until, you know, more confirmations are made when he reveals the secret to other people, I guess. First, that's currently probably on him, how he constantly resets over and over. But the main thing is, though, is that this episode was so enjoyable. It felt mm. like it was four to five minutes to me. I, I really loved this episode. And then at the beginning of the episode two, to how Subaru was trying to have all the villagers touch him and all that to make sure he knew who cursed him. The granny grabbing Subaru's ass was out of fucking left field. Him ...in different spots, and then he realized it was the dog. I was like, well, that was kind of obvious. I mean, it was... Honestly, like... Many people are like surprised and shocked that I was able to figure out that it was the dog. But was it that hard of a guess? Like you've been watching with me every episode and the only thing that really stuck out was the dog in every run. Like if you were watching it passively week by week and not really caring about the details, maybe you would forget. But like I felt like the anime was like directly telling us that, hey, this bald dog is sus. He's been there every fucking time. You know, someone has died of a curse. So, like, I, I, like, is it that difficult? Like, I, I genuinely don't think I'm, like, a super intelligent person. I know my limits. I know exactly how mediocre I am. But at, least, at the very least, I try to be really attentive. And I try to really lock in and focus. That's the least I can do if I'm not, you know, super IQ. But I felt like the dog shit was... Yeah, a lot of reactors at some point accuse the dog. Like, that was the only thing that was consistent. If we're trying to figure out, like, what was the thing that happened in every run? It was the dog. And in the third run, when we didn't go, we never, no one got cursed. And Subaru died of rem and no sickness was shown. So it's just like, oh, another fucking data point to suggest it's the fucking dog. Obvious, but the outcome of it wasn't, if you get my point. Like, I expected the dog to have some form of, like disease or something and gave it to Subaru. But yeah, I thought that she was a rabies, dude. No, it wasn't that. Turns out that dog was like the ringleader of different type of <laughs> It was crazy when the dog showed up glowing with this bald spot glowing with a bunch of witch fiends. That shit was actually so stupid. It was funny and stupid. It was just bizarre. A tiny bald puppy just leading the witch fiends of and it's like, oh my fucking god like your spiritual beast it was leading it it was taking children out into the woods and probably gonna feast on them and stuff so so yeah that dog kind mm. of an asshole that yep. was a bit of an asshole killing Subaru like that multiple times so yeah I knew it bro we can never trust bald people <laughs> that's what I have to say but like how often have I been suspicious of someone for them being bald and I turn out to be correct there's a couple times I fucked up for example uh, not Visions of Colia, Scarlet Bond tends to a movie. I was wrong there. I was wrong, okay? <laughs> There's- Isekai Shikaku right now is- Well, he's not bald. He's just a fucking orc or a goblin, but- <laughs> Listen, listen. 
My instincts are telling me that the bald is bad. Yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, how do you feel about the entirety of this episode? How do you feel about Subaru's character development? How he stood up to protect the kids and all that. And he remembered their faces and what they... That part is weird to me. Like, guys, am I being weird? Am I just such a cynical and narcissistic and evil person that me thinking Subaru caring about the kids and their dreams and aspirations after a couple runs is kind of weird to me? I genuinely don't know if this is a me thing or if this is like a show trying to tell us thing. Because like, Subaru displayed these qualities for Rom and Felt as well when he was thinking about should I just give up on the seller or not in Arc 1. Like, when I looked at that shit and he was making those justifications for the kids, I'm like... Well, he's known them for like 20 days. Hmm. Good point. Each run has been like five. But it's not like he... It's not like he interacted with the kids every day for those five days. He does seem very close to the kids. And he's very good with the kids. For sure, right? There has been... I guess it's just... And maybe in the light novel, they hang around a lot more. Yeah, anime skimmed over it, but yeah. Maybe it's just the anime adaptation of us not being to show the true, you know, how much they spend really time together. And, and double that with me just being like, who fucked these kids, you know? It's, it's, that's pretty much that. They wanted. I mean, if you constantly repeat your life over and over again, I guess you're going to start catching on to certain key things that you have to do. You're probably going to learn people's personalities and what they want. So most likely that's how Subaru remembered everything. No, that's another thing. I mean, he killed himself for Amelia after meeting her once. Exactly. But again, there's a lot of the times where he cares about other people so fucking fast without even like anything being established because he's just a fucking simp. I can understand that for Amelia, right? Because like there's a in that first episode, he got really he got, that was the best run in terms of affection and bonding, right? That was truly the run to make Amelia waifu if there was ever going to be a run. I can understand why he would, you know, have those motivations. And it's not like he killed himself there. He died by Elsa. And then the second run, what happened? Well, he died because the fucking bandits. Then the third run, what happened? Elsa killed him. It's not like him killing himself, but he did have these motivations after those relationships were mentioned. And I don't know. Just trying to figure out if I'm just a fucking evil asshole that, can't fig that doesn't think that this shit is normal or if the anime is trying to tell us that Subaru has different tendencies to act like he does care about other people, but at the end of the day, it's just all a self-serving thing that he's doing. Everybody. So one thing I do wonder about is, who was that girl that Subaru couldn't remember? I am very curious about that one. It's the girl with the dead mom braids the side girl who brought the dog in. But it's also interesting how he didn't remember her name. He remembered every kid's name. He remembered every kid's names and their fucking dreams. But that purple hair girl? He knew nothing about. Why? Is she evil? I thought the dog is the cult. I, I thought the dog is the ringleader. But she was the one bringing the dog every time. But it was like a stray dog and she's like an orphan. What's going on here, actually? Actually, think about this. Subaru took the time to remember everybody. All yeah, every character's names except that one purple haired girl. Why? Children there. And he remembered their ideals of what they wanted. But then the one girl that popped up. Mm. And that was the one that was separated from everyone. Good point. Apparently, Subaru didn't know much about her. He didn't even know her name. He, like, said the braided-haired girl. Yeah. That, that's what he said in this episode. And coincidentally, the braided-haired girl is always the one bringing the dog to Subaru in each run. Coincidence? Who knows? I could be wrong. I could have read it wrong. Maybe I have. Maybe I'm derping right now. Maybe I'm going a little bit brain dead, but... Wasn't she also dying at the end, too? That was a bait. Actually, I'm not sure how that goes on beyond that, too. Yeah, the barrier being broken, right, is also suspicious. Could the dog have done it? Who knows? Well, the barrier exists there, right? So witch fiends can't just cross it and break it. Summon from within. So there could be a traitor, right? And she could be the traitor. That's a very good point. But the foot being shown as Subaru got baited to go into action, that was all a bait. Was the kid there? I can't remember. I have to go check. I could have swore he didn't realize who that girl was, or he didn't really recognize her that much. So if that is true, where the fuck did she come from? Because you'd think Subaru repeating his life multiple times over and over, he would have recognized her, so... I, re I remember her. I remember distinctly when we first went into the village and actually got bit on that second run with Rem. She was there. The purple-haired girl was there. Who is she? Now, another thing, too, is that the, uh, the person, the master of the mansion... Roswell? He actually went out and did something. He had to dress up in royal clothes. 
Right, because this run, we actually made a lot of different things, you know, uh, changes in the timeline. And obviously, we're going a different path. And Roswell left. He went to go visit someone that he doesn't really like. The worrying in how he described the moment was... I forget exactly what he said, but it's just like a hassle. Someone he doesn't really enjoy. Something is going on, and he needs to go meet and talk with somebody. Other than that, it's... I can't really guess who the fuck it is. Maybe Roswell's going to talk to Reinhardt and share their lolicon dojins together. Maybe Roswell is going to Reinhardt so that Reinhardt can show off his new lolly to Roswell. I, I don't know, bro. Clothing and stuff, not, you know, normal commoner clothing. He had to go out and do some form of business meeting. Yeah. So what exactly was that about? And apparently he didn't have to leave the mansion at any time in the previous lives that Subaru had. But this time so There's other did. questions, uh, too. I mean, who is this girl? Who was the... What event would have led to Roswell being called out to go fly away? Let's think about this for a second. What's the key difference right now? Well, the key difference is that we figured out who the curse is going to be, and Subaru pretty much dispelled the curse before it could get activated. Rem, Ram, Amelia. But, like, even if I could figure out... Like, the diff we can point out the differences. But, like, it still wouldn't really tell us, like, this new character. Because I feel like this is a brand new character, right? But us, basically, having a different run on this new run has caused Roswell to take action and answer a call to someone that he doesn't like and go talk to them. Because Subaru doesn't seem suspicious anymore because he's helping out. I don't fucking know. Person that the master of the mansion had to meet. Why did he have to go? No, no, no. I know we went to the village early, right? That's why I said we went there early and then we dispelled the curse early, right? Go out. I mean, there's a lot of questions I have right now, but let me know your fault. Maybe there's no direct correlation with the specific action Subaru take, but simply because he took a different action that caused Roswell to go a different path. That could be explained too. Maybe I'm tunnel visioning and trying to make sense out of it when at the end of the day, these are just independent events happening. And there's no real connections other than Subaru just doing something different, thus Roswell doing something different. Thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you Thank you, Chibi! And I'll try to get these, again, review videos on sync with the most recent episodes because I think it's a little bit more, I don't know, fun rather than knowing everything and talking about the episodes beforehand. But there's the video. Please go like the video and sub to the channel if you haven't. And I will see you guys on the next one.